In this video, I'm going to explain the Monty Hall problem and how to intuitively understand the solution, which is usually counterintuitive. So first, briefly, what the problem is, you're on a game show where there's three doors and exactly one of the doors has something like good, like a prize. You could think of it as a million dollars or a car or something like that. And the other two doors have not a prize. So you could think of it as being nothing or in some versions, a goat instead of a car, something like that. So for this version, I'm just gonna say, suppose that uh, the prize option is a million dollars and the non-prize option is just nothing rather than goat versus a car. So let's say one of these three doors has a million dollars behind it. The other two are empty and you basically have to first pick one. Let's call these doors A, B, and C. Your task is to pick one door. Let's say I picked A, right? So you said, all right, I'm picking door A. Then here's what happens. The game show host does this. Out of the remaining doors, he's gonna say, all right, he's gonna open one of them and show you that there's nothing behind it. So like, let's say he opens B, shows you that there's nothing behind it. So now, it's uh, your choice is either to stick with A, your initial pick, or switch over to C. And first of all, the reason this is guaranteed possible is because if you picked the right uh, door, if the million dollars was really behind A, then it doesn't matter uh, which door the, do uh, the host opens because neither of them have the million dollars. But let's say the true prize was behind B then the game show host would just open C to show you that there's nothing and then you would either pick A or B or if the true prize was behind door C then in that case the game show host who knows where the prize is by the way uh, would have to open B and then you're you can either stick with A or choose to C. The answer is that you should always switch because switching doubles your chances of winning the million dollars. The reasoning is uh, that most people have though is, all right, let's say the game show host opened B and showed that there's nothing. Isn't there still like a 50-50 chance that it's behind A versus C? Um, because initially you had uh, a one third chance of getting it right because it's one out of three. And after B was opened up, now there's two doors remaining. So isn't it still just like one out of two? So isn't it now 50%? And the answer is actually that if you switch over, you actually have a two thirds chance or a 66% chance of winning. And most explanations go something like this. Uh, all right, if you initially picked A, then there's like a one third chance that it's behind A and a two thirds chance that it's behind either door B or C. And the game show host, the key to understanding it is this, is that the game show host has some information and they're using that information. And they're not just randomly opening up one of these two doors. If they randomly open up one of these two doors, then yeah, it wouldn't matter, but they would also open up the, the one with the prize one third of the time, right? So they're using systematic information and you know, at least one third of the time or two thirds of the time when the prize is in fact behind one of these doors, they have to choose which one to open and they're revealing some information in that sense. And that's why switching is better. Here's the analogy that really helps me understand why this is true, because most people, this is really trippy. I think the reason this is trippy, just psychologically, there's something about these numbers, three, one third, two third. Here's a different version of the Monty Hall problem that's actually the exact same problem. Let's say there's a hundred doors, right? So let's say there's literally a hundred doors and alphabetically, instead of uh, ABC, I'm gonna call them door one, door two, door three. You know, you might have door 45, something like that, door 99, door 100. So there's 100 doors. You, and it's the same game, but here's what the game actually is. The game is you are going to first pick one door that you think the prize is behind. Let's say I'm gonna pick door three. I think door three has the prize, that's your pick. Now the game show host who knows where the true prize is and who uh, knows, you know, obviously which one you picked, now is going to systematically open out of the 99 closed doors, they're going to open 98 of them, meaning all but one, right? If you think about it, that's kind of what they did over here, right? You picked something, then 
they opened up all but one door, right? They opened up, uh, you know, they kept one door. So that way you have to make a choice between that one other unopened door or the door you originally picked. So here, if you originally said, I'm picking door number three, and then the game show host opens up, let's say, they now are opening up all but one door. Let's say they open up one, two, four, you know, literally all of these doors, except for, you know, door number 76, right? That's the only one that they left unopened, right? Now, your ta question is, do you want to stick with door three that you picked, which really only had a 1% chance of winning because it was one out of 100? Or do you want to switch over to door 76, which technically has a 99% chance of being the right door because it stood the test of not being opened, right? Notice it's not 100% because there's a 1% chance that door three was in fact the right one, the one that you picked originally had the million dollars, and now none of these remaining 99 doors have the million dollars, and so the game show host is just opening 98 of them at random, and 76 is just randomly, uh, doesn't have the prize, and it's just randomly left unopened. That, that's a 1% possibility. But a 99% possibility is that the prize was behind any one of the other 99 doors. And after you pick, made your pick, the game show host opened all but one of those other ones. And so there's a 99% chance that it's behind door 76, again, because the game show host is using information. And that's how you can think about the Monty Hall problem.